Hello, everyone. My name is Salah Hassana, and welcome to our guide on how to deploy deep learning models on MRI scanners for seamless integration into the clinical workflow. As an innovative community of investigators, we will continue to develop novel approaches to cardiac MR. In recent years, there has been an explosion of neural networks capable of completing a plethora of impressive tasks. The next step is to begin integrating these networks into the clinical workflow. The framework I will be going over today can be used to deploy any deep learning project, but I will be focusing my presentation on the deployment of a deep learning based T1 estimation method called MyoMap. Traditionally, a T1 map is estimated using a MOLLE sequence. The sequence first collects five T1 weighted images, followed by a three heartbeat idling period before collecting an additional three T1 weighted images. The eight T1 weighted images are then fed into a set of fitting equations, which produce a T1 map. The goal of MyoMapNet is to reduce the number of heartbeats necessary to produce the T1 map from 11 to just four. The four T1 weighted images are then fed into a fully connected neural network, which estimates the T1 map pixel by pixel. MyoMapNet was evaluated on over 170 cases with promising results before we attempted to deploy it on a Simmons Vita T3 scanner. Now, normally when executing a sequence on the scanner, the reconstruction takes place inside of the image calculation environment called ICE. ICE is a server which is made up of various functors that, produce the that process the case-based data and produce diacoms, which are displayed on the console. However, it can be challenging for customers to program their own functors and this limits the deployability of deep learning models. To address this limitation, we utilize a prototype framework for image reconstruction called FIRE, which we obtained from Simmons via research agreement. FIRE allows us to easily integrate custom code written in popular languages such as MATLAB and Python into the ICE pipeline. In order to integrate FIRE into the ICE pipeline, we need to modify a compiled ICE program by using the generic use dot component available under the default add-ins tab. Once the dot add-in has been added to the sequence, you will see a add-in configuration button appear at the bottom left corner of the sequence. Then under Q, you will have the option of adding an IPR file, which adds two new functors to the ICE pipeline. These new functors will be the fire emitter and fire injector. The new functors can then be inserted into the ICE sequence and will be used to transmit data between the ICE server and the FIRE server. All communication between the servers will be in ISMRM RD format. Once we have established a connection between the two servers, we can begin deploying MyoMapNet on the FIRE server. In order to package our program for deployment on the FIRE server, we need to first take all of our code and libraries and put them into a Docker file, which will be used to generate a Docker image that contains our code and the compiled libraries. We can then export the file system inside of the Docker image into a crude image, which can then be mounted on the scanner's computer. Once the crude image has been mounted on the fire server, we will have successfully deployed our deep learning model onto the scanner and an MRI tech can now run the sequence as part of a regular clinical scan. Multiple crude images can be mounted at the same time to allow for the easy deployment of multiple deep learning models. In the case of MyoMapNet, we experimented with using a unit architecture in place of the fully connected network. Here, you can see an MRI tech run the modified sequence on the scanner and the T1 map appearing on the bottom right of the screen. On our GitHub repository, you can find the MyoMapNet program, which has been modified for deployment on the scanner. You will also find the Docker script used to build the crude image under the Docker folder. In addition to the code, there are three configuration files. The first is the IPR file, which is used to add the fire emitter and fire injector into the I sequence. The second is an XML file, which is used to configure various settings on the fire server to meet our needs. One important setting is the location of the fire emitter, which is set under the raw emitter tag when sending case-based data, or under the image emitter tag 
when sending image data. In the case of MyoMapNet, we placed the fire emitter after the T1-weighted images had been generated and motion corrected on the scanner. The other important setting you will need to configure is the location of the fire injector, which injects the output of fire back into the ice pipeline. In the case of MyoMapNet, we place the fire injector right before the final functor in the ice pipeline, which produces the diacons that you now see on the scanner. The last configuration file is the INI file, which is used to configure network settings, just as the IP address and port number of the fire server. You will also use it to set the name and the path for the crude image you want to deploy. This is how you can easily swap out crude images. Thank you for watching our presentation and feel free to reach out to us with any comments or questions you might have.